Hey guys, welcome or welcome back. I am very excited for today's video because I am going to be ranking my oldest 15 eyeshadow palettes in my collection. I actually did this video over two years ago. At that point, I ranked my 10 oldest eyeshadow palettes and I watched that video and only one of those is still in my collection. So the oldest out of these palettes are probably from 2018, early 2019. And the newest, I think, are from like the very beginning of 2020. So yeah, these are the 15 oldest palettes in my collection. And looking through them, it was hard to rank because I realized because I've had them for so long, that means they've actually survived a lot of declutters. So I actually like all of these palettes. Keep that in mind. But I am going to rank them from my least favorite to my most favorite. And I'm in a different spot right now because my old tripod and ring light broke. So I had to buy a new one and I'm still trying to figure out how to set it up because it's a totally different size. So bear with me. If you're interested in eyeshadow palette videos, check out my eyeshadow palette playlist because I have a lot there. I will link it in the cards and in the description box. I upload four videos a week. Stay tuned for more and let's get into this. Alrighty, number 15 is the mini Lila palette by Natasha Denona. I still like this palette. Like I said, I like all of the palettes in this video because they've survived a lot of declutters. I do enjoy the Natasha Denona formula. This one though, I just don't reach for it as much because of the color story. I've said it before about this palette. There's just something about like three purpley shades and then two neutrals that just kind of throws me off. I'm like, I don't really know what to do. <laughs> so that's kind of my issue with this palette, but I do like the quality of it. This is, I think the second Natasha Denona palette I bought. The first one ever was the mini nude. And I did like that one. I used it a lot, but I did eventually declutter it. So number 15 is the mini Lila. Okay, number 14 is the ColourPop Sweet Talk palette. Now, I do like this palette. <laughs> I'm gonna keep saying that. But I don't tend to reach for it a lot because it is a little bit on the monochromatic side. And it did have two pressed glitters, which I don't use. Therefore, I removed those. And then this one is a super shock shadow, which I don't know. I don't have that much good luck using this eyeshadow. I do like the quality though, and I have filmed a look with this palette. And honestly, I should put this in my shop, my stash soon, because I do think it's a good palette. I just feel like a lot of the looks kind of end up the same. Plus there were the pressed glitters. So it's good, but not my favorite from ColourPop. All right, number 13. The Tarte Toasted palette. I still have this and obviously I still enjoy it because I've kept it around all these years. And the packaging, I have to say, gets an A plus because it's really, really pretty. But I love warm tones. I've said it before. I really, really do. If I could only wear like one type of eyeshadow look forever and ever, it would be warm tone neutrals. And I just love this color here so much. The shimmers are really pretty. They're not that like super foiled metallic shadow. Ouch, I just pinched my finger in there. Like I said, I'm kind of struggling today and this whole setup thing really threw me off because I don't know why I didn't realize this tripod was like a totally different size than my other one. Anyway, back to the palette. I really do enjoy this one. It's a little bit monochromatic, kind of like the Sweet Talk palette. I do feel like I can do a wider variety of looks with this one over the Sweet Talk palette. So not my favorite ever, but I do still enjoy it and it's still in my collection. Number 12, the Anastasia Norvina palette. And this one is quite lovely. It's a really nice color story. I don't reach for it as much as I once did. As you can see, I have it pan on this palette. And I really do like some of the shades. The ABH formula, it's not my favorite anymore. I do like it. And this is the only palette from the brand that I've kept around because I really do like these colors so much. Um, I absolutely love this gorgeous, like it's a gray purple called Volatile. The pink shimmer is beautiful. This kind of periwinkle 
so pretty and i did also film a look with this for my reviving old palette series and side note i feel like there's a lot of side notes in this video but bear with me a few people have requested that i bring back the old palettes series where i do get ready with me's using older palettes because i do a lot of shopping my stash and that sort of thing on my channel i do want to bring that series back i just wanted to do some other videos and i felt like some people were kind of losing interest in that but I do want to bring the series back. Stay tuned. My goal is within the next two weeks to bring that series back. So bear with me there, but yeah. I still like the Norvina palette, but that brand, I mean, I definitely don't buy from them anymore. And just formula wise, I like it, but it's not my favorite. Okay, Lorac Pro. I think this one is actually quite nice. This one was in my latest Shop My Stash, if you saw that. and. I have to say I really enjoyed the looks that I got with this palette. Um, the metallics, they're really smooth. The mattes are very, very pigmented, but they blend nicely. Um, I definitely would not say this is like the best thing in my collection, but I still enjoy it. And yeah, I liked the looks that I did in my shop, my stash. And yeah, I thought it was pretty good. All right, so next up, Urban Decay Naked Reloaded. You know what? A lot of people really did not enjoy this when it came out. However, I actually do enjoy this one. I kind of get why some people don't like it because I don't think that the shimmers are quite as smooth as another Urban Decay palette that I will be talking about in this video. The mattes are absolutely amazing. And like I said, I really do love warm tones, so, you know, I enjoy this palette. And again, this is one that I did film a look with for the Reviving Old Palette series. You can check that out if you wanna see the Get Ready With Me's there. But yeah, I still think this one's great. And I love these two metallics here, Reputation and Burn are just gorgeous. So yeah, even though a lot of people didn't really like this palette, I think it is quite nice. Okay, we are on number nine, and that is the Dose of Colors Marvelous Mauves palette. This is the first of the Dose of Colors five pants that I purchased many years ago, and I still really enjoy it. And I have to say, at first when I bought this, I wasn't that into it, because at that time, I was not as into smaller palettes. I was not super into monochromatic palettes. This is one that over the years since I've purchased it, I actually enjoy it more than I did when I bought it and I've gotten more use out of it probably in the last like year and a half than I did for the first whatever two years that I had this. I love mauve tones so much. These matte shadows blend so easily. They are so smooth. The color story is stunning and the formula is absolutely amazing. I do have a few of these other five pan palettes in my collection from Dose of Colors. This is the oldest though, and I still think that it is great. Okay, next up, the Morphe Jaclyn Hill palette. You know, this survived a lot of declutters because I truly enjoy the color story and the formula, even though I would not purchase from the brand now and it's it's a bit too large for my taste i do have some other larger palettes that i like but somehow this is like even bigger than those it's crazy how ginormous this packaging is but i kept it around because i think the formula is really really good the mattes blend very well exceptional and the metallics are quite foiled and again i do like warm tones but I also like that you get like these colors here. I don't use them that much, but they actually are really nice. I just realized there's a chunk missing out of the purple. <laughs> anyway, it is a redundant palette though. I mean, look at these two shades. I'm sorry, but those are exactly the same. And these two, awfully similar. So, oh yeah, and these two, like, okay. Slight variation, but it's repetitive, it really is, but the quality is there and I still enjoy it. Number seven is the only other Morphe palette that I still have in my collection, and that is the Ring the Alarm palette. Now, I do think that this was nice that this was smaller and more curated, and 
Like I said, I love warm tones, so this one I really enjoy. And I actually, when I first bought it, I thought that it might actually be too similar to the warm tones in the original Jaclyn Hill palette. However, this pulls a lot more orange and red than that palette did. I think that those were kind of neutrals leaning warm for sure, but these are like fiery orange colors, which I love. And you know, I don't know if I got a good one or what happened with that whole thing, but the formula on mine is still exceptional. I think these are really foiled and metallic shimmers and the mattes are really, really nice. So yeah, kind of crazy, but I actually think that that one is very lovely. Okay, next up is the palette that I'm wearing, the Persona Identity 2. This is a lovely palette and I really wish that I used it more. The formula is exceptional, super smooth, super pigmented, mattes are easy to blend. Today's look was super easy. I just used, if you can see, this brown in the crease, the dark matte brown in the outer corner, and then this really light pink shimmer, which is actually a bit of a duochrome. It's really nice. And wow, like why am I not using this palette more? This was pretty hyped up when it first came out, but I don't really hear much about it. And Persona has not released a lot of eyeshadow palettes. They've only released a few. And it seems now they're super popular for their blushes, which I have yet to try. But I feel like those are like going viral online. There's like this bright pink one that I keep seeing on Instagram all the time. It looks beautiful, but yeah, this palette, really, really good. Okay, we are on number five, Urban Decay. This is the Born to Run palette, and the formula on this, in my opinion, is better than on the Naked Reloaded. Also, warm tones, I've said it a million times, I love warm tone shadows. However, you do get some kind of more interesting colors in here. This taupey shade here is so beautiful. It's one of my favorites in the whole palette and it is a cool toned color. This one is really pretty, so is the green. I love like the coppers. It's a really well formulated palette. I love the color story. I think it's really nice, so yeah, I think it's great. Okay, number four. This at one point was probably my number one palette in my whole collection, and that's the ColourPop So Jaded. I do really enjoy the ColourPop formula. I don't think the formula is quite as amazing as like the next couple palettes that I'm gonna talk about, but the color story just, I mean, I love the colors in here. Like it's all my favorite things. Now this one did have two pressed glitters as well that I got rid of, but I don't count against it as much as I do in the Sweet Talk palette because that one's a smaller palette, so that made up a larger percentage of the palette than these. So that doesn't bother me as much, but these are just like what I love. I love jewel tones, absolutely. This green emerald is amazing. That one, that one's called Peridot. One of my favorite eyeshadows ever. It is so stunning. I also love Garnet and Ametrine and Citrine. I mean, just gorgeous colors, bold pigmentation. I do think that the mattes blend easily. Some of the shimmers are more chunky than others with this palette, but it just this color story and the jewel toned theme, I think it's well done. For a larger palette, I think this is very well done. I don't think it's repetitive. You know, like obviously I didn't need the press glitters, but it's a really, really nice palette. Okay, number three, Colored Rain Queen of Hearts. Wow, this palette had its moment on YouTube. It really did. Everyone was talking about it. And I'm still happy that I own this palette. Again, warm tones, like I said. I love them and purples as well. I love purples and this red metallic is absolutely gorgeous. This formula is one of the best formulated palettes in my collection. It just is. They're smooth, easy to use, very pigmented. This is a really, really good palette, absolutely. I have not tried anything else from this brand. I did hear some people say that they ended up changing their eyeshadow formula at some point, so 
I'm not sure, but I love this one. Number two, Pat McGrath. This was my first ever Pat McGrath, I think product ever. Um, and it is the Mothership 2. I think it's Sublime. The names of Pat McGrath products are so hard for me to remember. They're very complicated names, um, but I'm pretty sure that's what this palette is. This palette is beautiful. I have used it a lot. It may not look like it because these are very hard pressed eyeshadows. Um, there's hardly any kickback. I think I love the Pat McGrath formula. I do. And I own several other of her mothership palettes now. This is the first one that I got and I did ask for it for Christmas from my husband a few years ago and he bought it for me, which is super exciting. And since then I have purchased more from the brand because I really, really enjoy it. These shades over here are so stunning and this emerald green, like it's what this palette is known for, but you can do so much more with this palette than just that green, but I think that shadow deserves the hype. It is gorgeous. Okay, we are on number one, my absolute favorite oldest palette in my collection, Metropolis. I bought this palette the day that it launched and it was my first time buying a larger Natasha Denona palette. Before this, I had only tried the minis. And wow, just wow. I mean, I just don't really think that Natasha Denona has really like topped herself after this palette. I still think that this still may be my favorite out of all of the palettes that I own. I own quite a few of the mid-size palettes now. I did, I mean, this started like a whole love for me and I ended up buying a lot of other Natasha Denona palettes, particularly in 2020. I bought a lot of Natasha Denona palettes, but this palette came out in the fall of 2019 and the second I saw it online, I was like, I have to have that palette. $129, but this was the only palette she's done in this size. At that time, she had palettes that were $129, like Biba and Gold, I think, had already come out, but those have less eyeshadows in them. So I thought you get more eyeshadows in this. I think it's worth it. I was excited about it and I still love it and I still, I do not regret paying full price for this. I have hip pan on it. I love, like I said, I mean, I, I keep saying I love warm tones. I think you get it. <laughs> this palette is a lot of warm tones and a lot of golds, but there are some stunning duo chromes in here. This shade is gorgeous. This red is amazing. There's also a lot of the cream to powder formula in this palette. And that seems to be a big hit or miss for people, whether they like it or not. I personally really do like the cream to powder formula. I think it's really nice. I have no issues blending it out, but I know some people don't really like it. So personally, I want her to put more cream to powders in her palettes, but yeah, this palette, it's, it's getting up there in age. This palette, I looked it up and it came out September of 2019. And yeah, it's one that for me, I still really, really enjoy. So yeah, that is it for this video. I still enjoy these palettes and it makes me happy. It makes me happy that I have palettes that I bought years ago that I still like and I still wanna use them. And I really should use these more. Like I said, the Lorac Pro is just in my Shop My Stash and I need to put more of these in my Shop My Stash. I like to do a balance of trying new makeup and older products on my channel. That's like a big theme for me here, if you haven't noticed. So yeah, stay tuned. I upload four videos a week, although last week I uploaded five, which was exciting. And bear with me with the whole setup thing. I am I need to play around with this. I probably should have like tested it out before I was like, oh, I need to film this video right now. Poor planning on my part, but you know, I'm trying. So yeah, and also stay tuned. I do wanna bring back the Reviving Old Eyeshadow Palette series. So let us know your favorite oldest palette. Do you still have any of these? Do you have palettes that are even older than these? And if you're really bored, you can watch my first video that I did of this. That was two and a half years ago, but if you've got the free time, you can check it out. That is it. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.